Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Uh, we're in Chile with these two wines today, uh, and we're in the Colchagua Valley in particular. Uh, now, uh, one of them's labelled Merlot, uh, and uh, 20 years ago, we're just at the end of 2014, 20 years ago was when they first really got to grips with this idea in Chile that what they'd been calling Merlot from, uh, for a lot of the previous 50 60, 100 years, uh, wasn't Merlot at all. Actually, some of it was, but more of it was uh, the grape that uh, the second one is, Carmen Air. Um, and uh, you talk to these people and they say, yeah, we've got this Merlot here that ripens at this time, and we've got this other Merlot over here that ripens three weeks later. And it was really over only, I think it was Carmen, Carmen, one of the first people to, uh, uh, to make a point of uh, differentiating them on their label, although they call it Grand Vidure to start with. Um, but now, now Carmen Air has, been, uh, has become established as uh, uh, a Chilean trump card. Let's see, uh, which we do first? We'll do the Merlot first uh, and um, see how obvious the differences are between them. They may not be obvious. It may be that the winemaking style and the terroir is talking louder than me or louder than the, uh, uh, than the varietal, but um, let's have a see. So the Merlot first. Both 2012 vintage and both, are they both 14 half? Yeah, both 14 half percent alcohol. Classic Chilean aromas, um, black currant pastels. And um, it's, a, it's a characteristic that I pick up in wines, um, and I'm, I don't know, regardless of um, where they're from. Uh, the Razzaris winery up in, uh, well, the reds that they do um, in the Aconcagua, I find uh, that they have a strong imprint of it. Here, I, I also find a strong imprint of it. Is it winemaking? Is it um, yeast related? I'm not sure. Is it terroir related? If it's, if it's something I find throughout Chile, uh, you start uh, thinking, hang on, a lot of these winemakers would have been training together. Is there a winemaking style that uh, too many of them are adopting? Uh, but um, it's, it's, it's a smell that once you pick up on it and you think, ah, chilli, uh, you spot it in, quite, in, in rather too many wines for it to be uh, an accident. And... Um, it's a struggle to to get beyond that to actually find out what is the, the uh, in terms of the, uh, the 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 actual character of the wine that differentiates it from other wines. Uh, there is a juiciness, maybe a rounded uh, bit of rose hip in there, um, and maybe some sweet uh, mulberry rather than uh, strawberry on those those darker but not fully black berries. Um, it smells Chilean. And it's those same characters when you come to taste it. It feels like, um, um, I mean, Merlot is, uh, is not really a warm climate grape. I'm just wondering whether they've got uh, in vineyards here that's a little, little bit too warm because I'm getting a little bit of um, dry tan in here. I think part of it is oak, but I think also part of it is uh, the Merlot's got very ripe and has started to, to shrivel, giving these, uh, the, these dry tannins. Um, it's... It's okay. It's a, a problem I have with a lot of uh, Chilean wines. It feels a little bit too controlled, um, as if the winemaker needs to let his hair down or take the creases out of his jeans. And uh, it's it's okay. Let's see whether the Carmen Air uh, is uh, better, worse, different, or whatever. Now this smells better, um, and uh, the strange thing is, uh, you pick up some of those what I call the Chilean black currant characters, but here they are not as centre stage, and I think they're, they're probably at that same level. But the wine, the rest of the wine round it is uh, more exotic. There's a slightly voluptuous, perfumed, heady side here. Some people talk about hoisin sauce with. Um, uh, with Carmen Air. I don't really get that so much, but I do get this uh, uh, edge of the coffee bean and uh, the exotic berries, the, the going, in, well, yeah, we're going into uh, the, the blueberries and uh, boysenberries and, and blackberries. Uh, and uh, yes, it feels like it's going to be a more confident wine at this, at this alcohol level. I don't notice, um, I didn't really notice it on the smell of the other one, but I don't notice anything here that uh, hints at overripeness. And yeah, it's much more confident as a wine. Um, still get a little ed edge of those oak tannins and maybe still a little bit of that, uh, that, that controlled edge. Uh, but the, the fruit round the, um, round the tannins from both the grapes and the barrels is much more happy uh, in its 14.5% um, its alcohol. Uh, as I say, it, it ripens three weeks after, after Merlot. Um, and uh, so it's, it can be a struggle to get ripe, uh, ripe in, uh, in uh, quite a few Chilean vineyards. Here they've got it ripe and they've not gone uh, to try to get it overripe. So there's still this little bit of green herbal character flitting in and out. Uh, it feels like a wine that um, 
uh, will is, is feels very young now and uh, needs a needs time in either in the glass or in the decanter or in the bottle uh, a couple of years probably maybe two or three years to um, to really show at its um, at its uh, at, at its peak but um, I quite like it now and um, uh, so if you like your fruit on the uh, feisty and uh, uh, slightly chewy side dig into it now otherwise uh, keep hold of it and um, yeah try it in, in about 2000 and 17, 2018. Um, as for the Merlot, well, for me, this is testimony that um, if you're in warm sites in Colchagua, uh, maybe you shouldn't be growing Merlot. You should be going over to Carmenere. But a lot of vineyards have that anyway. Hey, see you soon.